welcome everybody to this uh, webinar regarding render engines. My name is uh, Dominic Dammelart, aka Curl Studio. Um, a freelance 3D generalist uh, based near Vienna in Austria, a little city called Stockerau. Uh, I think nobody ever a few probably visited this little city, but anyway, um, yeah, um, like I said, I will be talking about render engines today and um, maybe how you can uh, use one of them in your workflow and maybe make life for you a little bit easier, make it maybe your shots a little bit more realistic or um, just simply help a little bit uh, more in your pipeline. And I will talk about five different render engines today, so this will be um, Octane Render, this will be Vivre for Cinema 4D, Corona Render, Arnold Render and um, Maxwell Render. And I will I will try to explain a little bit the differences between those uh, render engines and hopefully after this webinar uh, you know a little bit better which one will fit your pipeline the best. And uh, so yeah, um, let's get started. First of all, I want to show you maybe my demo reel so you can check out a little bit more uh, what I'm doing and uh, what projects I've been working on. And I think we have no sound on the demo reel. This is because of the webinar software. Um, but if you want to check it out with sound and all the fancy stuff, you can definitely go to my uh, webpage, curstudio.com, uh, or just simply check it out on VMO. Uh, just search for Curse Studio demo reel, and you probably will find uh, this reel. OK, so I will just hit play and uh, have fun with it. All right, so that's it. Um, yeah, so I used for this uh, demo reel different render engines, um, to be honest. Uh, I don't really have for myself uh, really a preferred render engine. I love all of them because all of them have their pros, uh, pros and cons depending on the scene, depending uh, on the client, of course, because some clients just simply have one render engine and they definitely want to work with this render engine. So sometimes you're bound to the client, of course. Um, but uh, if you're doing freelance work and you, you can choose it on your own, uh, I will always decide on uh, the project that I'm on, which render engine I'm using in the end. And um, I just want to show you a little bit of the galleries of those different render engines that I will show you today. Um, so first of all, Octane Render is something that I will be featuring today, like I said before. And we can here go into the automobile uh, gallery and you can see uh, Realistic results are definitely possible. Uh, this is, by the way, really absolutely uh, an awesome shot. Um, this one as well. So as you can see, realistic results, absolutely no problem uh, with Octane Render. Um, Arnold, as you might have heard of, um, gets used in a lot of Hollywood um, uh, movies uh, in their in their pipelines, like MPC uses it a lot. Uh, ILM, I'm not 100% sure if they use maybe more Random Man or more Arnold, but at least in a lot of pipelines, Arnold is um, the first engine to go, definitely depending on the project probably. Um, so yeah. Then here we have Corona Render, a lot used for interior or exterior renderings. Um, I think it's also really, really cool. Uh, I will go a little bit more into depth uh, later on uh, with Corona Render. I mean, if you look at this picture, it looks absolutely stunning if you ask me. Uh, this one as well, 
there, there are a lot of good pictures, so you can definitely look at them yourself because we are really limited with the time. Uh, here we have three ray for Cinema 4D. Um, same thing with the other engines, absolutely no problem to produce uh, realistic results with this engine as well. Um, and the last one is Max Render. If you look here at the shots, there is definitely something nice going on. This is a pretty nice shot, as I think. So yeah, um, let me show you this uh, PDF that I created for you guys um, for this webinar. And the first engine I want to talk about is Octane Render. And I also want to say, um, if you're thinking about Team Render, all those engines that I will, re uh, will be representing, you can use Team Render or you can use their own built um, built in Team Render engine, let's say it like that. Um, that. Not every single engine is working with Team Render, but with every single engine you can use multiple uh, machines, so CPU or GPU. Uh, even with Obtain Render, it's possible to use multiple machines. So with all those five engines that I'm representing today, it's possible. Okay, so first of all, Obtain Render, uh, GPU-based, um, an unbiased engine. Uh, which makes it maybe a little bit more realistic. The pros are is a live preview, so you definitely have a live preview in Octane Render. I think that's pretty standard nowadays, um, but also definitely necessary to get a really fast look, how the scene looks, how the lightning looks, how the shader looks, how the material, and so on and so on. Um, the creation of materials is really, really fast, I think, in Octane. Uh, I will show you this a little bit as well. Um, you have really, really good render times. Uh, depends a little bit on the scene, of course, but normally uh, with one or two newer NVIDIA, like say like 780 GTX, uh, GTX and up, uh, you're definitely uh, getting some, some, some good render times. Other cons are with an um, undirectional uh, pass tracer like Octane Render is that you, as soon as you have some really small area lights inside your scene, you might get really, really long render times or endless render times also if uh, you have maybe a mesh light or something like that, so that you put an area light onto a mesh and then maybe um, hide it behind an object or something like that. Uh, this can be that Octane Render is really, really uh, slow since it's not a uh, bi-directional uh, pass tracer. Uh, also, uh, a really big con of Octane Render is that you're always bound to the VRAM of the graphic card. This means if you only have like, I don't know, maybe like three gigabyte of RAM on your graphic card or maybe six gigabyte of RAM on your graphic card and the geometry load is higher than that, uh, you might can run into, into some problems because then uh, the scene cannot be loaded anymore by Octane Render because it's just too huge. Um, and as soon as you get a file maybe from, I don't know, an architect or maybe someone that is uh, working with AutoCAD, uh, they're not really looking for that the geometry load is, is really low. They're just looking for that the model is absolutely accurate. So as soon as you get this, this model from the client, maybe, you might just run into a problem with Obtain Render and then you might have to switch. But anyway, let's get on to the uh, next one. And this is Arnold Render. Um, biggest difference, it's CPU-based. So you can only work with the CPU uh, with Arnold Renderer. It's also an unbiased engine. Also comes with a live preview, which is pretty much pretty fast. Um, I really like it, to be honest. Um, biggest pro is it can handle amazing big scenes. I mean, like, really, really, really big scenes. Um, if you have seen uh, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy or something similar, uh, there are sometimes like maybe 100,000 area lights going on, and also and DOF, and, and motion blur, and displacement, and volumetrics, and instant objects, and what do I know? And it might take some time to load with Arnold Render, of course, um, but it definitely can handle such big scenes without any problems, and that's definitely a really, really big pro if you're working on, on bigger projects uh, than the normal freelancer. Um, Arnold Render has def definitely I think very, very good and accurate shaders. You can, of course, um, achieve with it absolutely realistic results. Uh, the biggest con is if you are really like a small freelancer like me, and you might only have one machine with like maybe, I don't know, four cores, six cores, uh, whatsoever, it might be really, really slow uh, as soon as you start to uh, maybe activate an DOF something similar it might really become really, really slow. So I think Arnold Renner is more like really aimed to a little bit bigger companies or maybe if you have like two, three machines uh, standing around with some Xeon processors by Intel or maybe AMD, who knows. 
Um, you definitely can work with it as well, but for the normal freelancer, I would say it's definitely a little bit, a little bit hard to, to uh, work with it. As soon as you make animations, it definitely just takes too long. Okay, um, third engine, uh, Corona Render, uh, as you have seen before, a lot used in interior, exterior shots, has an unbiased and unbiased mode, and I think they also have a bi-directional mode, which uh, I think uh, makes it really, really good for interior renders, and this is probably also why it gets used a lot. Um, also comes with a live preview, like I said, I think almost every engine comes with a live preview nowadays. This is just simply standard. Um, comes for free for now, so you don't have to pay anything for Corona Render right now, which is, of course, pretty nice. Uh, I think at the end of the year, as soon as the alpha or beta phase is closed, um, you will also have to pay for it, I think, like a yearly fee or something like that. Um, um, but yeah, but for now, it's for free. Really easy material setup. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the easiest material setups that I ever have seen because you don't have a lot of options, but you still can do almost everything with it. Um, really, really good render speed, even with only one CPU, and it's only CPU-based, so you can't do nothing with your graphic card. Um, so if you're a small freelancer, like I said, with only one machine or something like that, Corona Render might be the way to go. And it's not only used for interior, exterior stuff as well. I mean, you can do, you can render with it everything you want, um, but it just seems like that a lot of people that are doing uh, this uh, exterior interior stuff using Corona Render nowadays. Um, the biggest con right now is that it still has a lot of bugs and crashes. I just downloaded the newest beta version, I think like, I don't know, 30 minutes ago, and tried the left pre uh, preview and it did crash. Uh, so yeah, it's still not 100% stable, but most of the time you should get, uh, you should get away with Corona Render. Um, fifth engine that I have here, and I think also the last one, um, is, oh no, it's not the last one, so it's the fourth, it's Maxwell Render, after that we have Wii yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, Max Render is CPU based as well, uh, unbiased engine, uh, pros, definitely has a live preview called Maxwell Fire, uh, has absolutely stunning and awesome materials, uh, also supports uh, spectral lightning, um, uh, by the way Octane Render also supports spectral lightning which means that the light gets transported by its full wavelengths while the other three engines that I'm uh, presenting are only uh, transporting RG and B. Uh, so Max Render and Octane Render might give you a little bit of a more uh, accurate result if you're looking pixel for pixel and compared to a real picture. Um, but this also means maybe in some cases longer render times, uh, which not which which doesn't mean that the RGB renders uh, don't uh, deliver realistic results. Uh, they definitely do. Um, comes with a nice material assistant. Um, it does. Max Render has some really awesome material assistant. So if you're not really into shaders right now and don't have really a big clue and didn't watch too much tutorials, um, you can really easy start out with the material assistant inside of Max Render and get your first diamond materials, gold, silver, all kind of plastics, um, car shaders, and so on, which is really, really cool. Uh, also, Multilight is absolutely awesome. Uh, Multilight is something that you uh, might, if you have an interior shot, you only um, render the shot once, so you only render out one frame, and afterwards you can control all the lights you have used in the scene or the color of the lights, and con can control them afterwards and render out an animation, like say, like a 300 frame animation, and um, you just simply, at frame zero, you just simply set a keyframe for turning off all the lights, and at um, frame 300 you just simply turn on all the lights to 100%, and then you get a really nice animation which gets rendered in like maybe, I don't know, depends on your CPU, 10, 15 minutes, and then you have a 300 uh, frame animation which you can show the, uh, to the client instead of just a, a normal uh, still frame, which is, I think, a really, really cool feature. Uh, the biggest con is that also Max Render is a little bit slow. It really is. Uh, it's unbiased and CPU-based, which is always a little bit a hardcore combination, I think, for the normal freelancer. Um, if you're a bigger company, you can definitely go with it. Um, like I said, I absolutely love the shaders inside of Max Render. Um, so yeah. Okay, so let's jump to the last one. We ready for Cinema 4D. It's uh, CPU based and also should be soon GPU based. I think there might be already a version around in the forum um, that you can download and uh, can play around with the GPU preview already. Um, it's an unbiased and biased uh, engine. You can send Vue for Cinema 4D in an unbiased mode if you want to. 
Uh, the newest version comes with a live preview, uh, the beta version. Uh, a lot of settings for faster rendering, so you can definitely optimize uh, V-Ray for Cinema 4D a lot, so you can definitely reduce uh, all the render times always, probably. Um, this is exactly what uh, V-Ray for Cinema 4D is designed for. Um, this is why also it's an it's a biased engine most of the time, and you will most of the time use it as a biased engine, that you can, can reduce really, really uh, hard the render times. Uh, comes with good shaders, definitely advanced really for Cinema 4D has been around for really, really quite a while now. Uh, and so yeah, the shaders are absolutely good. Very good integrated into Cinema 4D, of course, but this is also because it's so long around now. Uh, the cons might be, it's, uh, first of all, a little bit complex when you open it up for the first time and you see all those crazy windows going on. Uh, you might not really have a clue where to start, and this might be uh, the biggest con. But what I heard with the newest version, um, all those windows and all those settings get extremely reduced, what I heard, so you will only have like maybe two render uh, settings left, which will be extremely fast, at least what I heard. I haven't tried it out myself yet. Uh, but it's coming. It's definitely coming, so um, we have to wait a little bit for this, um, but I think it will be released really, really soon. Um, yeah, okay, so I think that's it for, for now for this um, little presentation that I, uh, that I made here. And I'm also sorry that I'm talking so fast. We don't have really much time, and I really have to, like, press this through so we really get, I have to push as much information in you um, as possible. So um, I think the next one that I want to do is um, making a sip of my water. Mm. Okay, that was perfect. And I think we will just simply um, jump into Cinema 4D. I have prepared a little bit of a, of a test scene um, for Octane, Arnold, Corona, Maxwell, and V-Ray. So we can see a little bit uh, how the scenes were made, a little bit, just a little bit of the material setup, and um, how those engines perform, and so on, and so on. So first of all, what I have here is Octane Render. So let me get here my Octane uh, layout, and let me activate here this, like I said, it's really only a, a little test scene to show you a little bit something. So let's start the live preview. As soon as you have installed the plugin uh, for Octane, you can do that inside of Cinema 4D. And as you can see, I um, have working uh, two cards right now, two graphic cards. So it's an, a 780 and a 970 right now. Um, and also, if we set here the priority to high, uh, we might get a, um, a faster render. But I don't want to do that because uh, also because of this webinar. And I don't want to take away too much from the graphic card. Um, so as you can see, it renders really, really fast. Um, I mean, this result already looks pretty good. We have a DOF going on. We have some metal going on. We have a little bit of, uh, I'm not sure if I use displacement or, or bump for this. Uh, but as you can see, this picture is already almost clear with two NVIDIA cards. Uh, I might, there might be a little bit something of noise here, but I'm only rendering this on low. If I really would set this here to high, uh, you would see that the MS here, the MS per sec, would jump up really, really uh, yeah, higher. Maybe to something like, I don't know. Okay, might not even be that high. Okay, whatsoever. Okay, 15, now it's doing something, now it's definitely getting higher. But anyway, as you can see, it's really, really fast. It delivers absolutely fast results. So this is also why a lot of freelancers jump into Octane bandwagon right now. Um, I can definitely understand that. Um, let's look a little bit at the shaders. Uh, as you can see, I have some metal going on. Um, if, you look, if you look at this, it's really, really an easy setup. Uh, you have three different material types that you can select, diffuse, uh, something that you would use for for all kind of gloss stuff, uh, glossy definitely for all kind of plastics, and specular would then be something like diamonds, glass, uh, and so on. Um, you know, the diffuse channel is basically uh, in Cinema 4D. If we compare this quickly here, the color channel. So this is here uh, the diffuse channel. Then we have a roughness channel. I'm not sure what this is called. Uh, this is probably here in the reflectance. Uh, might be. Let's go at GGX. There you have also the roughness, as you can see. So that's exactly the same here inside of Octane. Uh, film with film index, that's a little bit more, um, this would go a little bit more into depth. Uh, bump, bump, as you might have guessed, for bump mapping, 
normal mapping, displacement mapping, and the index, so basically the IOR right here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, really, really easy material setup, nothing, nothing too fancy. You also have a uh, node-based uh, possibility if you want to work node-based with the shaders, that's definitely possible, and I probably can find uh, the node editor. Yes, I can find it. As you can see here, we have this nice node editor and could play around with it, and I can see how my uh, uh, shader is set up, and so on and so on. So, working with um, with nodes can definitely make life a lot easier, and a lot of people prefer prefer it. I don't, to be honest. Um, but a lot of people do, so you definitely have the possibility to use a node editor. Um, okay, I would say let's jump to the next one. Uh, let's jump to uh, Arnold Render. And let me switch to Arnold here in my layout. So here we have the IPR render. Uh, takes a little bit at first when it's loading the scene for the first time, but we should get relatively fast uh, a result. Hmm, 12 seconds, 13, 14, 15, come on. Okay, okay, here we go. So as you can see, my CPU is already uh, running. I have an i7-5960X, uh, if somebody is interested in that, so you can uh, compare this maybe a little bit better. Um, but I think it clears up pretty, pretty fast, so I can see relatively fast what kind of result I have. Um, the sampling rate is right now a little bit low, so I could turn this a little bit higher so I get a clearer result. But I saw that at this stage I can already see, okay, where is my light coming from? Um, how does the, the, the basic material look? How does the floor look, the bump mapping, the displacement, and so on? And I think this was absolutely enough. And as you can see, this was, I think, for a CPU-based live preview, pretty, pretty fast. So absolutely uh, no problem with that. Definitely love it. Um, we can jump here a little bit uh, into the materials. Uh, by the way, Arnold and also Octane and Viri and so on, they all have a really, really good um, online manual where you can look up all the different things and how you set up the DOF, how you set up basic shaders and so on and so on. Um, Arnold is with the creation a little bit different. Here you definitely have to work with nodes. It's, it's, otherwise you can't even really load images and stuff like that. Um, so, as you can see, I can just simply type in here, I don't know, um, what can I type in? If I want to load a bitmap or something like that, I think I have just to type in bitmap, and it tells me here, okay, here I have a bitmap, then I just simply drop it in here, and I can go here and load my bitmap, and then just simply put it here, maybe into the roughness, or put it into the diffuse channel, and so on, and then just simply load my bitmap, whatever I want to use might sound a little bit complicated at first, but it's really, really easy. And like I said, the online manual is really so good that you get so fast into it that I don't really think that it's hard to get into Arnold, to be honest. We could also look a little bit at the render settings inside of Arnold uh, if you want to. It's really, really easy. You don't have a lot of switches. You can control the uh, anti-aliasing, the diffuse, glossy refraction, subsurface scattering, and volume indirect samples right here. And that's pretty much it, what you have to do. Ray depth, of course, you can control that as well. Uh, environment, if you want to override it uh, with something, motion blur enabling, and so on and so on. But that's not really a lot of buttons, to be honest. So you get really, really fast into it. Uh, for Octane, by the way, exactly the same. Uh, unbiased renders don't have a lot of settings normally. So if you look here at the kernels, you see you don't have a lot of stuff to switch around. And all the things that are questionable to you, you can just simply read in the manual, and it's really, really straightforward, I think. Okay, so let's jump to the next engine. Let's jump to uh, Corona Render. Um, and let's see what we get. Uh, Corona Render has also a live preview, and as I said, I really would like to use it, uh, but it's not possible. It's, it's crashing right now. Uh, after 15 seconds, it always... Uh, crashes, and this is not really good. So I think we have to do it with the normal render. So let's just hit render here, and let's see what we get. And as you can see, this cleans up also pretty fast, pretty good, so I can already see, okay, where's my light coming from? So I can uh, turn this around, uh, turn my HDRI a little bit around to get maybe a different angle from, from the light. Uh, I can already see that I used here a little bit of a map on the silver, so it looks a little bit dirty. So I can see how this looks already, and I can see how my silver material looks, and I can also see 
what my floor will look like. So as you can see, it's a really good and fast preview. Um, even so, it's not with the live preview, so I can't really see right now uh, in real time what's going on in my scene if I switch to HDRI now, for instance. Um, but it's a, it's fine like that, to be honest. So I can just simply stop that. Uh, I don't know, turn my HDRI around, maybe here, sky, I don't know, let's say maybe 120 degrees, click here and render again, and see pretty fast, okay, how has my light changed, and how does it look now, as you can see. So that's fine for now, definitely. Even so, I mean, the render engine comes for free, so we shouldn't be too picky, to be honest. Um, let's look here at the material setup. Like I said, I think it's one of the easiest material setups that you can get. So we have here diffuse channel. We have a reflect channel, so if you want to use, I don't know, want to make uh, metal, plastics, and so on, you want to tick reflect on. Refract, you would tick on if you want to do something like uh, glass and so on. Translucency yeah, or, or opacity is probably the same. Emission is if you want to uh, make a light material, so if you want to use uh, a material as a light. Uh, bump mapping, displacement, pretty much uh, straightforward. And as I can see, I have your opacity as well and your translucency. Uh, I think it's a little bit weird. Maybe translucency has something to do with SSS. Might be. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not sure 100% right now. Okay, so there's an extra opacity channel. So this is pretty much straightforward. Translucency, you probably have to, to read the manual again. I'm not 100% sure uh, what it's for right now. But anyway, um, let's jump uh, to the next uh, render engine. Or let me show you quickly the Corona render settings, and as you can see, nothing really absolutely uh, amazing is in there. You can change here uh, the render method from, uh, I think only the secondary solver can be uh, switched from Uber DKH to pass tracing. Uh, the 17 to 9 unbiased modes, you have them pass tracing, pass tracing. This is probably a little bit slower. If you have this UHD cache, you probably have something between unbiased and biased. I think it's something something mixed. What it is exactly, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe I should talk to the developers one day so I have a little bit of a, of a bigger clue what's really going on there uh, in the back. So as you can see, nothing really absolutely um, amazing is going on. It's really pretty much straightforward, so nothing to be, to be scared of. They also just implemented team render, so you can use this as well, so absolutely no problem. So let's jump to the next engine. Uh, this is Maxwell. Um, really love this engine, to be honest. I'm a huge Maxwell fan, and I don't think I have and layout for this. This is because um, you do everything here with this uh, little scene thing. You just go plugins, uh, Maxwell, and then you drop in this scene uh, thing, and then you can control everything via this uh, scene object right here. So you just simply start here up Maxwell Fire via the scene object, and this is the live preview from Maxwell. Uh, just takes a little bit. To, to render the first time. Um, yes, it's already rendering, so as you can see, we get pretty fast a preview, and we can see uh, what's going on. Of course, depends a little bit here on the uh, on the sampling level that you have set here, and also the quality level uh, here in the fire settings. Uh, but I can already see, okay, how does my metal look, how does my floor look, and, and so on and so on. So, yeah, a live preview. Pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's look a little bit at the material. Like I said, also comes with a nice material assistant. If you want to use that, um, right here, you can use translucent metal, car paint, and so on. Um, stand, diffuse emitter, dielectric metal, plastics. Uh, you have a lot of stuff. Then you can also import a lot of stuff that comes with Maxwell um, for all kinds of metals and other stuff. So that's really, really cool. You have a lot of pre-made materials that you can choose from, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and I don't think the, uh, the material setup is really, really hard to understand. There are also a lot of really, really good tutorials on YouTube uh, where it is especially explained for Cinema 4D. Uh, I also made an introduction tutorial myself on VMO for Maxwell, and uh, I don't know. When I started with it, I think within two or three hours, I was really absolutely, maybe even faster, I was, I was really into it and, and could work with it, and it was absolutely no problem, to be honest. Um, render settings, uh, render settings. There are no really any render settings. Uh, if you wanna have, uh, if you wanna choose a little bit something, we can just simply um, use this here, 
and then it gets sent to the final rendering. As you can see, we get then a little bit, uh, a little pop-up from Maxwell Render, and here we can then render out our scene and also control here, down here, our multi-light. As you can see, I haven't switched it on right now. Um, I think if I click here on stop, I can access here the settings in the render options. Yes. And then I can switch here the time limit, how long it should render, uh, what, what should be the max sampling level, should it stop maybe at SL12, like here, or should it stop higher or whatsoever. And I can control some other things. But like I said, with unbiased engines, you don't have a lot of controls. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much straightforward, I think. Okay, so let's jump to our last engine. Uh, let's jump to V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Um, Let's have a look at it, and I think I have a pre-made, uh, no, I don't, no, I really don't, okay, I don't. Uh, I have nothing prepared here as layout, I think, but anyway, let's just simply switch into V-Ray, and uh, we can turn on here the V-Ray RT, which is new, so this is our live preview, and as you can see, we can already choose OpenCL, single kernel, or CUDA, uh, for NVIDIA cards or the CPU engine, I will use the CPU engine for now. And let's just make a quick preview here with VRE RT. And let's see what we get and let's see how, how fast it gets loaded. Okay, that was pretty fast. And also looks pretty good, I think. Definitely looks, looks pretty good. So I can, as I said before, multiple times, I'm really sorry, but I really can, can see already a little bit of my dirt on the metal and I can see what's going on with the silver and I can see what's going on with my floor and I see where the light is coming from and so on. So I can really switch this extremely fast. And as you can see, I think uh, Vira is working with the new core and I don't even think I have the newest core right now. It's working pretty, pretty fast here and uh, gets really, really uh, rid of this noise pretty, pretty fast to be honest. So I really liked it to be honest. Um, this is by the way the first engine that I ever started out to, uh, to achieve realistic results. So uh, I would never say anything bad about Viri. I definitely love this engine. Like I love all of those engines, to be honest. So don't get me wrong. Um, as you can see, we have a diffuse layer. We have specular layer. Specular is basically, if you want to break it down, where you can control the IOR, so the index of refraction, uh, of reflection, and where you can uh, control uh, the roughness and so on. Um, as you can see, we have here a lot of specular layers. Um, most of the time, you might only want to use one, but there are, of course, in the real world, some special materials where you might have to use a specular layer over a specular layer. Let's say you have, like, maybe some kind of wood material um, that, that has its own reflection, of course, already, and then you might um, put some kind of oil on it because you want to make it a little bit better, a little bit more fancy. This might be a case where you want to switch on a second specular layer for the oil only for instance. Um, then you have a flakes layer for cars. This is basically for cars and stuff like that. Might can also be used for snow and stuff like that. You have a bump channel, you have a lumo, lumo, luminosity layer. Material weight is by the way if you if you ever uh, if you if you want to check out Viri, material weight you can it's basically your alpha channel. So you can use uh, an alpha channel here it took me uh, took me quite a while to, to to find this out when I first started out with V-Ray. Uh, here you have a refraction layer, SSS layer, and so on, and you can create also a lot of other materials here with uh, with the V-Ray shaders, as you can see, blend materials, displacement, and so on. By the way, the same with Corona, Octane. You have you don't have so much, but you don't really need it to be honest. Uh, and the same with. Um, Inside of Maxwell, you don't uh, create it here. You create it inside here uh, of, the, of the Maxwell material. Okay, um, so let's check out the render settings a little bit of V-Ray. As you can see, a lot of buttons are going on here. So this might be scary a little bit at first. So you have here the options button with a lot of text and stuff like that. Uh, you have the anti-aliasing and so on. Like I said, with the newest release, this should be a little bit... Um, reduced and also should be a little bit more, let's say, user-friendly. Um, so I can't wait to see that, to be honest, and I think maybe it's already released, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe they have uh, something going on in the form already that I haven't checked out yet. Um, so yeah, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but it definitely should become easier and don't get too scared too much about the settings because 
I think it's it's really easy. Uh, you can watch some of my tutorials. You can read a little bit of the manual, and I think it gets explained uh, really, really fast what is going on inside of UA. Okay, so this was those five render engines, and uh, by the way, I did also a render out uh, with all five render engines, a picture where I said to myself, okay, at this point, the picture is almost noise-free, and let's start out with Arnold Render that I have here, and as, I ca as you can see, uh, with the DOF, uh, with the DOF turned on, um, it took like something uh, like 21 minutes to get really, really clean, and I think there is still maybe a little bit of noise going on there. The problem is as soon as you start with DOF, you really have to crank up the camera anti-aliasing, and this really, really produces a lot of render times. But like I said, Arnold is also not really, um, I think, made for the normal small freelancer that only has one machine standing around, at least not if you want to render out animations. If you want to go for, for still frames, absolutely no problem whatsoever. As soon as you want to go for animations, it might be a little bit hard, so I think Arnold might be something if you have multiple machines or if you are a bigger company and definitely want to load a lot of geometry, a lot of volumetrics, motion blur, what do I know, everything that is going on um, and don't have anything crashed. Um, Corona took like something like five minutes. There is still a little bit of noise, to be honest. I think that it just switched it off after five minutes. So I think probably after 10 minutes, it would have been completely clean, um, but I think the result was okay after five minutes. So five minutes was definitely, um, I think, a nice result, to be honest. Uh, Maxwell took something like 10 minutes. As you can see, this picture looks a little bit blurred out. I could have fixed this in Photoshop really, really quickly to make it look a little bit more stunning, but it wasn't really necessary since it was just a test to show you guys. Um, so after 10 minutes, uh, this picture was pretty much uh, pretty clear. I think there is still a little bit of noise going on. Might should have let it render me, like maybe five minutes more. Uh, but I think the result was still pretty good. And also they also try to always optimize Maxwell as good as they can. So yeah, Maxwell also gets a little bit faster. But like I said, it's still an unbiased CPU-based engine. But I definitely don't want to miss it in my pipeline, to be honest. So really, really love it. So this was Octane, um, this really looks like, I don't know, I mean, this was this was a one minute render with, with two cards, um, and as you can see, it's I think it's almost completely clean, and I don't really, really not, I don't want to push Octane so much, yeah, because I also work with a lot of other engines as well, because it's just simply necessary, because the geometry doesn't fit or, or whatsoever, or just I, I prefer something else because I think the, the, the shaders are more accurate or whatsoever. But as you can see, this picture was clean after one minute with full DOF and uh, all the dirt going on and, and, and the silver shader and, and so on. So, yeah, what can I say? Two graphic cards, one minute render time, everything is clean. Welcome to Octane. Um, and here we have the V-Ray RT render. Um, five minute render, I think also almost completely clean. Um, you can see the dirt pretty good. You can see the silver. We, we don't have any anti-aliasing problems, really. The DOF comes pretty good. Here we still have a little bit of noise going on, so probably 10 minutes to get it completely clean, I guess. So probably something in the range of Maxwell, I would say. Um, will depend on how much they will also um, optimize the new core now. Um, I think I'm still working with the old core. I'm not 100% sure. So this also might change the render time a little bit down and also could have optimized it a little bit, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think after five minutes, this, this picture still looks uh, absolutely good. So yeah, so this was those five render engines at least. And to be honest, it's really hard for me uh, to prefer one over the another, uh, over another. This is also because I'm a render engine junkie. Um, but also because it's hard to tell. Um, I think when I did my, my diamond ring shot, I was definitely going for Maxwell because I think Maxwell has one of the best um, uh, diamond shaders that I have seen so far, to be honest, and really, really accurate and really, really good. And like I said, it also works with uh, spec uh, specular light transport, which makes it also even a little bit more realistic. So this is why I choose uh, I did choose for this one project, Maxwell Render. Corona, I would probably use maybe for interior and exteriors, but this is hard to tell since V-Ray is also pretty, pretty good to handle those things. Since it's a biased engine and it can really, really make uh, like Corona is, uh, but it can also produce for these shots really, really good shots. Uh, and V-Ray, you can use it for a lot of stuff, to be honest. The same with Corona. And Corona comes for free. 
Um, but like I said, Corona will also cost some money uh, after this gets out of beta or alpha stage. Uh, Arnold is definitely an awesome engine. I mean, it's, 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 it's used in a lot of Hollywood movies, of course. Um, so I would say Arnold is definitely a really, really good engine, and I'm really happy that they did bring it to Cinema 4D. Um, but like I said, it's also really, really slow, but it's really, really good. So if you have a bigger pipeline, if you're a bigger company, or if you, I don't know, if you just have a lot of machines standing around, uh, Arnold is definitely an engine that I would check out, to be honest, if I'm working always on a lot of big projects. Uh, but there, you could also go with V-Ray. So, it's really hard to judge for me uh, uh, or to tell you which engine to use, but what is clear that Arnold is definitely not the engine to use for a small freelancer. That's definitely clear. Maxwell really depends, to be honest. It's also really, really slow, like I said, CPU based unbiased. Um, so for a normal freelancer with one machine, I would definitely prefer Corona, Octane, and V-Ray, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it really depends. Really, really depends. Um, also, uh, uh, last but not least, what I want to say, uh, if you don't want to afford any of those engines, uh, the built-in Maxon engine, the advanced render, is also really, really good. You can achieve with it realistic results, of course. Definitely, absolutely lifelike realistic results. It might be just a little bit, little bit slower, maybe, but it's definitely good. If you don't want to spend any money, you can be definitely happy that you have the advanced render inside of Maxon because it can definitely produce absolutely awesome results. Um, what will come soon to uh, Cinema for these Render Man? I'm not sure if they already released it, but I don't think so. I think they're still working on it. Um, is Render Man for Cinema 4D. You will also get one license for free, um, but not for commercial work. So you have no chance to do any commercial work with this free license, um, but at least you can check it out a little bit. Uh, Render Man will also be probably more an engine for, for bigger companies that have to push a lot through the through their pipeline uh, and will probably be a little bit slower for a normal freelancer, um, but we need to check this out as soon as the plugin is there for Cinema 4D and really compare a little bit those, those render lines and, and see what's going on. And the last engine that I have here is Gorilla Render. I don't know if any one of you heard from this engine. It's really, really an advanced engine, I think, even though so it's a little bit a younger engine. Um, might come a little bit closer to, to Arnold Render. You can push a lot of area lights, a lot of uh, geometry, a lot of displacement, volumetrics, and, and so on uh, through, uh, through Gorilla Render. And as you can see, this engine got used in a lot of movies, uh, in Mirror Mirror, Dread, uh, the remake of Total Recall, and so on and so on. So it's definitely also starts to get used by some of the, of the um, uh, Hollywood companies or the companies that produce uh, the VFX uh, for those uh, Hollywood companies. And you can definitely produce with it absolutely awesome shots. Um, I also talked to the developer a, a little bit a while ago. They might, this is not really, this is by far not 100% uh, for sure, but they might uh, make in the near future uh, a plugin for Cinema 4D. If they really will do it, we will see. Um, we can just hope, because I think Gorilla Render is really, really an awesome, an awesome engine. So, um, I think that's it for now, and I'm really, really sorry that I had to push uh, through so much information in such a short time, to be honest. Um, I hope there will be a second webinar where I can have a little bit more time and can jump into those render engines and show you the workflows a little bit better, because today I only had 45 minutes, this is also why I only could, uh, sh could have showed you this a little bit of, of, of the shaders uh, and not really get a little bit more into depth. It wasn't just, it wasn't possible. So I really hope there will be a second webinar where I can explain this all a little bit better and show you some workflows and show you Gorilla Render and RenderMan and Vray and Maxwell and all the other engines. So you get a little bit more an into depth look and also a little bit maybe on, on my workflow and so on. So I hope this render engine jungle, uh, let's call it tutorial, was a little bit interesting for you and gave you at least a little bit of a clue which render engine you definitely don't want to use in your pipeline and which one you want to use and which one might become soon for you interesting. Um, yeah. So yeah, my name is Dominic Damanat, uh, aka Curve Studio, and I hope you had a lot of fun 
uh, with this little introduction. And if you have any uh, questions after this webinar now, please feel free to ask me any questions uh, as long as you want, and I will try to, to answer them all. So thank you.